everybody and thank you very much to have the possibility to, to intervene on a few points. So I was invited by, by the project to intervene on RI and CSO participation. And so maybe just one word on myself, so just that you know where I'm speaking from, you know, why I will tell you the things I think I have to tell you. So I'm a molecular biologist, but the most important is that over 12 years I was director of a small French-based NGO called Foundation Citizen Science, Fondation Science Citoyenne, and we were doing critical analysis of science policies mainly. And so our basic question was, if we want to build a socially and ecological more just society, what kind of science, what kind of innovation would we need for this? And where are science and innovation standing today in response to, to these uh, stakes? So it was a very, let's say, political work. We worked also a lot towards the European Commission, towards policymakers in general, but a lot with NGOs and with citizens and with scientists. And um, uh, since two years, I am a program officer in a Swiss-based foundation, what is a foundation Charles Leopold Mayer for the progress of humankind. And we are very clearly a um, foundation based on humanistic values, but now really supporting um, uh, groups uh, uh, going for the social and ecological transition. So again, we are a kind of, let's say, a, a foundation with a humanistic and political culture and very much interested in the issue of uh, ecological transition. So I would have a few points on um, RRI and CSO participation, participatory research, citizen science, there are now uh, so many uh, terms describing it somehow. And I would not like to come back of what you did in the, in the project, because uh, from what I saw, not only today, but uh, somehow yeah, following the project from the very beginning, I, uh, it, it's clear that a really a huge work was done, not only on the RI Toolkit website, but also in having now, yes, a big community. I mean, Melanie said it already very nicely, you know, so I, I don't have to come back to this. So my first point would be, is there a political message uh, about uh, RI and civil society participation? And I think very clearly there is. It is a political issue, you know. Um, policy, uh, science and technology and innovations are deeply political facts in our modern world. You know, just remember that it's a very political issue because if you talk about CSO participation and in, if you go back into the 1990s where the term of citizen science came up, uh, written from this book by Ellen Irving and uh, also in the community-based uh, research uh, uh, movement in the US, it is about social transformation. So it is about creating better conditions for the people and a lot for very vulnerable people, for people living in very difficult conditions. So it is social transformation, it's coming to the ground and trying to do better for the people. So that's the first point I think we should really keep in mind. What brings us, I think what is so difficult, and there's also a question how far we want to push the concept of RI, is the bigger frame of RI that we accept society and economy and everything is like it is and we are going for growth and we are going, going for competitiveness and we are going for uh, innovation with the big E, not asking about direction, orientation, for whom is it, with whom and for which benefits. Fine. I think we can be much more ambitious and say, no, there is somehow another societal model we are going for with CSO participation and with RRI. And maybe it's not so much about growth, it's rather about prosperity. And maybe it's not about so much competitiveness, but it's about uh, cooperation and so on and so on. And this is not so easy to transmit because the master narrative our society is somehow uh, swimming in, it's on growth and so on. So I think this is a, a really important point, or at least to reflect how far we want to go for it. What includes also that, and the RI Tools project somehow uh, uh, assumed it already, 
Research and innovation is about democracy. It's not outside democracy. It's part of democracy. And since we have public policies on research, and since we have public policies and budgets on innovation, and since these uh, innovation and research, research results are linked to other public policies all around our daily life, if it is transportation or energy or social inclusion or whatever, then we have to admit it is on, about democracy, and then we should treat it like this what makes a big discussion about the freedom of research and innovation, and, and you had this already. <clears throat> so maybe some perspectives. What can we do with all this work, what, what was done in the project, but not only on CSO participation? I think one political um, opportunity right now is the Sustainable Development Goals movement. Huh? As you know, the, the UN uh, adopted um, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, uh, then declined into uh, 167 uh, specific targets on poverty eradication, on health issues, and so and, and on ed energy supplies. Uh, so use this mo use this moment as to integrate what we did on participation and on what research and innovation should be for to integrate it in what will coming up over the next years up to 2030 with this uh, UN agenda on, on SDGs. The problem with SDGs is it's not a binding treaty, as you may, may, might know. Huh? So the, the states all over the world, of course, they engaged, huh? they, they subscribed to this, but they are not legally obliged to do something, but they will do something. And, um, and even if SDGs is a kind of just listing what are the problems, what we shall do, and it's not really going up to the roots and saying where does, do the problems come from, for instance, from our dominant economic system, what will create poverty as an intrinsic element of its functioning. But still, we can use this uh, to bring up CSO participation and, and RI. So, try to, to do links there, and this is for instance, something we will find in universities, in uh, uh, local authorities, wherever. You know, a lot of people are invited and are already implied in the, in the SDGs. Um, then there is the movement of sustainability in higher education institutions. For instance, you have this uh, international network for campus sustainability. Uh, you have universities uh, emerging that are dedicated to sustainability. So I think there again, RI and uh, especially since I was invited to, to talk about CSO participation, have absolutely their place to, to, to find and, and to be integrated. So accordingly, so where you are, you know, maybe it can give you just an, an idea. Aha, here is maybe a, a point where I can individually then do something with the structure uh, w where I'm working in. Um, then the whole question would also be, um, you know, I like very much this uh, term, what came up now, it's already 20 years ago, act local, think global. I think it's still very, very true and very uh, strong. So one could imagine, when you take participatory research uh, projects, when you do it on a local level, you can link to very local initiatives, for instance, on organizing re local renewable energy supply, so... Uh, stepping out of the, very often in our country, centralized energy supply with nuclear energy, coal energy, and so on, going to renewable energy supplies locally. And then you could even link this to, for instance, uh, solidary financing of the project. So you see, coming from RRI and the CSO participation, you can go very deeply into initiatives that will transform society. You know, it's not only on the sur surface, it will deeply transform how citizens feel in our countries uh, and, 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 and what they can do. And, it, and the whole concept is somehow also uh, about empowering, empowering citizens to, to change their life. Now, I think what will be very important is the next framework program. So don't miss the point with the next framework program. When I go back, FT, FP6, we had science and society. FP7, we had science with society. In the very first text, what was published by the European Commission in, in February 2011 on Horizon 2020, nothing. The issue had disappeared. Instead of all what was done before, and all a quite strong already support from, 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 from the EC. So, what we did, what I said, I was still in an NGO, 
we organized uh, a coalition of NGOs with scientists and with scientist organizations, and we worked very hard on this with people from inside DG Research very much in favor to continue the pro project and to, to continue the program. And then, so we had this NGO coalition, we were even writing a letter to Barroso, uh, signed by 100 organizations and saying, you have to keep on this, you cannot just put it out. And then we worked with MEPs from the European Parliament. And it was only this concerted action of people from DG Research, very devoted to the issue, NGO coalition and MEPs that made the program come in. So we, we had then uh, the SWAFs, yeah, so Science with and for Society. And we had even RRI, because the people in DG Research were very tough on this, you know. So, but just to say, if you do not move, we won't get so much, you know. So be very careful, and maybe it could be that you try to link, I think it, maybe something will come out at the beginning of 2017, uh, uh, you, you know this better than me, but if I remember with FP7, it was three years be before Horizon. So, so be, be very, uh, very careful with this and maybe link with other RI, to, uh, RI projects, just to say, we are a strong community, so, so keep it going. So, okay, that's... <laughs>